on the Feminist News Network, the network by women, for women, and about men. On today's segment, Oma Ati and I will be discussing one very controversial issue. Sexism. Sexism. Sexism has been a topic of controversy for many years, with recent events bringing light to it today. Today, we're going to be focusing on the sexism that plagues the television news industry. The reason why this topic has been so controversial is that many people believe that sexism does not exist. Newsflash, not only does it exist here, but it also exists everywhere else in the world. And today, we're going to prove it with some key insights into the world behind the studio desk of the news shows you watch during the day. The news brings a variety of information to millions of viewers every day. But have you ever stopped to question who is covering these news stories? Who is getting assigned certain news stories? Who is the group constantly excluded from the domain of equality? If you guessed women, congratulations, you're right. There has been a noticeable trend in the type of behavior that female news reporters are forced to endure. From interrupting people to vile comments, female news anchors are barraged with interruptions to their news reports further denouncing their role in the industry. Let's view the following clips. Just from viewing these clips, I can detect the frustration and annoyance these women feel due to the interruptions. Imagine this frustration is felt by these women on a daily basis due to the low level of seriousness that they are being taken with simply because of their gender. The comments from female journalists about their experiences in the field of news they report further in the clip are even more disturbing. Some of the things these women say range from personal to general statements. However, the one fact that does not change the level of disrespect and sexism these women are forced to face. Canadian CBS reporter Jelena Adzi states, There has never been a time where somebody shouting has not been a part of my experience in the field. It is clear from the pattern of constant interruptions that female news anchors are not respected in the same manner as male news anchors, nor are the news stories that they report conducted to be as important. These women are forced to be victims of verbal abuse, of disrespect, of the harsh clutches of a system that refuses to release its claws from the tight fist it has wrapped around the necks of women for years. I agree, Danielle. The principle of the matter lies not on the fact that these are female news anchors, but on the fact that these are females, another gender, in the existence of the human race, subject to a level of intolerance, undeserving of any human being. As women, we deserve to be treated with respect. We deserve to have our work treated with the same respect, and we deserve to be treated like human beings. The gender I am, the gender we are, should not limit us to the type of treatment we receive, and instead be an example of how we needed to be treated. There are male news anchors in the clips that we have shown, but it's evident that females are disproportionately targeted. Female news anchors are more prone to being harassed simply because they are women. Society feels that it's more acceptable to interrupt women when they are speaking. In the clips, the mic is often abruptly snapped from females, but not from males. Women in the news field are quite literally being silenced because their voices are not as valued as a man's. Spoken like a true woman. Let's take a look at another segment from Fox News Primetime where we can see the true power of words. Welcome back to this week's segment of The Chopping Block where we slice up misogyny one man at a time. Let's see who's getting chopped this week. Or does not. Whose finger's in point? my face right now? Mine, because I'm telling you to shut up. But anyway, Ooh. I mean, you shut up, know your role and shut your mouth. My role is yeah. a woman. Yeah. I'm a tax holder for being a woman and uses her gender to strengthen his own argument. I'm disgusted too. The body language also helps to understand the conversation better. Cunningham moves in closer to Holden's face in order to intimidate her and then later crosses his arms in order to assert his dominance. He looks comfortable, whereas Holder sits up straight, which establishes his superiority as a male. He speaks in a very loud, aggressive tone in order to seem more authoritative and superior. Tamara, Earth to Tamara is 20 greater than 10. Tamara? Are you talking to me like I'm an alien? I'm um, not. However, you can notice that Holder refrains from showing too much emotion in order to not be seen as a stereotypical emotional and irrational female. This is an image created by males through centuries of sexism. Women are not taken seriously when they are loud or emotional. Let's watch some more. What Cunningham's saying is, His by the time comments, he, are you listening to this, Sean? Can I, what did he say? I don't look like a Catholic girl. What do I look like? What do I look like? Uh. Love expression. He sits there like a king, knowing that the viewers and Hannity 
are loyal subjects who will always support him. He seems amused by Holder's argument. Cunningham is comfortable unjustly attacking Holder because he knows there will always be people there to support him. Such as Hannity, who asked Holder what did he say, as if he doesn't recognize what was wrong with what Cunningham said, showing Hannity's ignorance towards the attack made on Holder. Sexism is so ingrained into society that men like Hannity cannot detect anything wrong with such a situation. And when men are called out on their actions, specifically on television news, they immediately defend one another. Sexism provides a culture in which men are comfortable and band together, whereas women are not able to do the same thing. And this manifests itself in the news environment as well. Well, it looks like Bill Cunningham just got chopped on the chopping block. We'll see you next week. Let's get cracking as we examine the preposterous beauty standards that exist in the television news industry. Let's start off with a simple Google search. When you Google female news anchors, the results on the very first few pages are bombarded with negative headlines, mainly concerning the appearance of female news anchors and sexualizing them. We see headlines such as TV's sexiest news anchors. 41 female anchors so hot you'll forget it all about the news. 30 jaw-dropping female news anchors from around the world. These headlines give us an insight into what society associates with the term female news anchors. Too much emphasis is placed on their appearance rather than the content they are covering. Furthermore, this creates a harmful culture where female news anchors feel they need to satisfy beauty standards and compare themselves to each other in terms of appearance. This should not be the case. Women in the news industry experience prejudice not only through being interrupted, but also in regards to their physical appearance. Female news anchors must be attractive in order to obtain a substantial amount of airtime. Here at FNN, we don't support these ridiculous standards, but the same does not apply to other news networks. 94% of news reporters that we find sexually appealing are female because male news anchors are simply not held up to the same standards. The news industry exploits the appearance of females in order to attract a larger audience. About 60%, that's 3 out of 5, news segments consisted of female journalists with a high sex appeal. It's clear that popular broadcasting networks exploit the looks of their female anchors in order to appeal to and attract their audience. Let's take a look at the case of Gretchen Carlson, a Fox female co-anchor. Answer, America. She's gorgeous, uh, gorgeous. Look at her today. Beautiful dress. You look wonderful. Gretchen, How are you? you look wonderful. Gretchen, very, very beautiful dress. That a great color. Mm -hmm. right. In summary, Gretchen's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. You look beautiful. Well, Thank you look you. fabulous too. Thank Brian, can you tell Gretchen she is definitely winning today? <laughs> she looks amazing. Winning. Wow. And no, it's not because Fox and Friends is too hot. But Gretchen is really too hot. Blame her. And skirts. Gretchen, I guess what you're wearing right now, the skirt might uh, cause some problems. It would not be advisable. As you can see, Gretchen's male co-anchors on Fox and Friends felt the need to consistently comment about her beauty, as opposed to focusing on the issue or topic of their segment. Instead, the repetitious language of beautiful or cute emphasizes their demeaning attitude towards their female co-host, reducing her to the clothes she wears and her outwardly appearance. Carlson's blatant discomfort can be seen in each clip, illustrating the sentiment shared by other female news anchors. In one clip, she attempts to redirect the comments about her appearance by re reciprocating the comment towards the men. However, this comment is not taken seriously by her co-hosts, who instead continue to talk about her appearance without giving her any attention. The dismissal of Carlson being present during this conversation conveys an obvious sexism in this environment. In another clip, we see two male anchors speak about Carlson's appearance as if she's not present in the room. They talk about her, not to her. Instead of acknowledging her as a human, they act as if she's non-existent. Because females are not given the same respect and attention by their male counterparts in the work environment. Another Fox News anchor, Megyn Kelly, was harshly criticized by mass media because her spaghetti strap dress was deemed inappropriate and too revealing. Whether women are pressured to look sexually appealing, criticized for being too revealed, or expected to maintain a slim figure and good looks, it is clear too much focus is placed on the woman's appearance. Stop everything! We have breaking news! This just in, I just received information from headquarters and our executives are reporting that this past year has been a great year for women in the news industry.
Women have made some massive strides in the television news industry. We are seeing more women than ever before, and we are seeing recent moves towards a more female-inclusive newsroom. Most notably, the Today Show has an all-female lineup, making it the first morning program to only be anchored by women. This is groundbreaking. Here for women in the news industry. There was a record high of 58% of female TV reporters and 66% of female news producers this past year. There's more women than men in the news industry. Come on guys, you have to admit that this past year has been revolutionary for female news anchors. It may seem like women must dominate the news industry because there are more women than men in it. Fox News, CNN, and the Huffington Post have a greatest gender parity. But while that might may appear to be the case, these deceptive statistics hide the bitter reality that even though women may play a bigger role in the field, they aren't adequately compensated for it. Men continue to receive 62% of credit and byline for reported news. At popular news stations ABC, CBS, and NBC, men report triple the amount of news that women do. Although there are more female news anchors in the industry, they report less news and are unfairly uncompensated in the industry as compared to their male counterparts. Sexism in the news industry is rampant and a legitimate issue that needs to be addressed. On the other end of the spectrum, women tend to cover less important news, such as lifestyle and commentary, where 57% of the anchors are female, and education, where 51% of the anchors are female. Statistically, it's evident that there is a difference between the perception of male and female news anchors. Fueled by this idea of traditional gender traits, women are believed to be submissive, passive, and nurturing and dependent. Men, on the other hand, are expected to be dominant, active, rational, and independent. These stereotypes are the reason men are assigned hard news stories. Because we, as a society, tend to believe that men are more capable of reporting difficult content and that the audience is more likely to trust the man reporting groundbreaking issues such as politics or economics. Now we have an exclusive interview regarding this topic with Eliza Wiles, an executive producer who works freelance with over 15 years of experience in the television industry. Networks and, and I had a lot of women around me, but I didn't have a, see a lot of women running the company. So while you could say the present, the female presence was there, there were, there were a lot of women doing work, there were not a lot of women in position of making financial decisions for the company and um, human resources decisions about hiring. And when you're not having as amplified a voice in the top uh, across, when you're not having an amplified voice when it comes to budgeting and hiring, then you're going to see a lot of the same people get hired and budgeted for. So if we're getting more women and a more diverse, diverse group making those kinds of decisions at very top level, then we will start to see a reshaping of the departments that reflect the sensibility of a broader scope of ideas. Uh, can you please describe your journey? Furthermore, the sexism is evident in the wage gap that exists with men in the industry earning more than females. When Kat Sadler left her position as an e-news anchor, she cited that it was due to the fact that she earned half of what her male co-host earned, exposing the clear sexism that existed in the television news industry. In addition, Hoda Kotzeb received less than half of her predecessor, Matt Lore's salary. Having replaced Floor after he was fired due to sexual misdemeanor, Kodav is only played seven million of Floor's alleged twenty million. Women continue to earn less than their male counterparts for the same jobs. This is evident of the sexism in the industry, as the wage gap contributes to the different treatment of female and male news anchors, and unjustly favors males over their equally competent female counterparts. Now, let's mix it up as we reenact a scene from the news. Now, let's take a look at this clip where Bill O'Reilly, host of The O'Reilly Show on Fox News, is about to get cooked. Slowly. 130. These guys are being savage. They know about it in real time. They've got a fast team. We've got Apache helicopters. Right, We've got but, them in but, Italy. You know, Why? Who that. said to stand down? Def Defense Secretary Panetta said today. It. Okay. That's and, and their that's job. Perfectly legitimate. That's their job. And can, people well, let, can, die. I, can I tell the audience what Panetta said? Sure. I'm going to calm down for a second. Now let's see the same clip with the roles reversed based off the sexes. 
These girls are being savage. They know about it in real time. They got the fast team, we've got the Apache helicopter, we've got them. All right, but Leon Panada said today- Who said to stand down? The defense secretary, Panada said today- I don't buy it. Okay, and that's perfectly legitimate. That's their job, that's their job and people die. But can I tell the audience what Panada said? Are you gonna calm down for a second? There are many things wrong on The O'Reilly Show, yet the effect seems to be heightened only with their reenactment of the same situation. Throughout the discussion, O'Reilly used a patronizing tone when talking to Janine Pirro, a former judge of New York. It may not seem patronizing, however, he furthers these misogynistic actions when he continuously interrupts Ms. Pirro while she states her argument. He also states during one of his interruptions for her to calm down for a second while Ms. Pirro laughs to the side. Yet these actions continue to be overlooked in the eyes of society. As seen when the roles are reversed, instead of one of the females being interrupted, the male is interrupted, which emphasizes the unfairness of the situation. Seems misplaced, right? However, society is only able to see this situation is unfair when a male is the victim, the result of rampant sexism as exemplified in this new show. Now let's move on to discuss the hardships we faced while making this groundbreaking show. Well, we thought getting interviews for this segment would be a piece of cake, but here's our reality check. All except one of the copious experts we contacted were unable to participate in an interview. They cited both legal concerns and personal issues with the topic being addressed. A Fox female news anchor we contacted expressed interest in participating but feared that the project had a Me Too slant, which discouraged her from participating even after we clarified our research had no affiliation with sexual assault allegations. However, her reply gave us more insight into why she rejected us in the first place. Her reply implies that she thinks she can't succeed in news media if she speaks about sexism in the news industry. Women who dare to speak about the issues that occur in the workplace risk their entire careers, careers they work tirelessly for, helping us understand why so few women are willing to address sexism in the news media. Because there is a clear risk associated talking negatively about their companies. By agreeing to the interview with us, they would be subject to scorn by their supervisors, who would say it goes against their non-disclosure agreements, when in reality, all they fear is a bad reputation or a scandal for the news station. This was the case with another news reporter from a local Fox news station who could not participate in the interview due to her work contracts. Legally, according to the First Amendment, it is allowed to speak about sexism, but socially, it's unacceptable and harms the reputation of the female. Female news anchors put years worth of work to build their reputations, often encountering more obstacles than a male. And so many understandably fear the risk of having their reputation being tarnished, as seen with the Fox News anchor. The states of California, New York, and New Jersey are currently considering banning confidentiality clauses in work contracts in order to encur encourage more women to report discrimination within the workplace, and other states should take similar action. Interestingly enough, even when women are willing to speak up without fear, they are prevented by management officials. A CBS News anchor we contacted was very enthusiastic to help us until she was asked by management to not participate. The work environment fears a scandal, but by doing so, allows problems to continue on unaddressed. Management feels very uncomfortable, but if simply addressing the issue causes so much discomfort, then the women that are actually victims of sexism in the workplace must be highly uncomfortable, don't you agree? This discomfort probably stems from a fear, as sexism most likely does exist in the workplace. Women do want to speak up about it, but cannot because higher authorities do not allow them to do so and they fear for their own careers. Let's get some more insight on this issue from our expert. Um, in my experience, the person holding the camera has usually been a man. And I think we need to recognize that most of the images we get through news and other sources of media has been through the eyes of men. And we shouldn't say that that is a bad thing and we shouldn't take away jobs from anyone, but there needs to be more literal points of view. Someone else needs to hold a camera. Overall, despite some evidence to the contrary, rampant sexism exists in the television news industry. As evident by preposterous beauty standards for women, content assigning favoring men, underrepresentation of women as news sources and as reporters, and unequal pay for women in the industry. However, recently in society, we are seeing a whole new wave of movements working to fix these type of issues for women. Now, let's all work together to end the sexism that plagues nearly every industry. We can do it.